Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mr. Toby, and I'm the host of Musical Chairs, brought to you by Vermont Symphony Orchestra's Symphony Kids. Today, we are coming to you from the Boys and Girls Club in Burlington, Vermont. Now, the Boys and Girls Club serves over 250 kids with programs that help them succeed in school, live healthier lives, and become tomorrow's leaders. Did you know that Boys and Girls Club of America has some very famous alumni? People such as Academy Award winning actor Denzel Washington and pop singer Jennifer Lopez. We are so thrilled to be here at the Boys and Girls Club in Burlington, Vermont and have a very special show planned for you today. Later on in the program, we're going to make a musical instrument out of some things that you may have laying around in the house. So now's the time to look for the following materials. Some construction paper, an empty soda bottle, a paper towel roll, some masking tape, and last but not least, a pair of scissors. Now at Musical Chairs, as you remember from last week, we learn about the instruments that make up a symphony orchestra. Raise your hand if you've ever seen a symphony orchestra, folks. Well, that's great. Looks like some of you have. Then you've probably noticed that an orchestra is a large collection of musicians all playing together. All of the instruments in the orchestra are part of what we call instrument families. Now, you probably already know this from the last show where we learned about the string family, the violin, the viola, the cello, and the bass. An instrument family is a group of instruments that share something very special in common. So can you think of some different ways that musical instruments make sound? Some instrument families are pluck and bowed. Some are struck and shaken. And some are played with our mouths and with our breath. And how about this? Can you play music like this? Probably not. That's ridiculous. Instrument families are a lot like colors. When you put them together like red and yellow, that makes orange. Or red and blue, that makes purple. You get something new, unique, and magical. Now the orchestra is made up of four families of instruments. We have strings, we have woodwinds, we have brass, and percussion. Now how about this fluffy family of kittens? Do they belong in the orchestra? No way! Today, we are learning about the brass family. But before we begin, I want to show you something really cool. and tell you a story about how the Brass family may have come about. Pretty cool shell, right? Well, believe it or not, it's a natural horn. Now, people living in the tropics a long time ago, you know, with palm trees, coconuts, sunny beaches, they had these seashells all over the beach. A lot like Vermont, right? <laughs> now, one day, somebody found out that this seashell was missing the point. You see how there's no point there? Well, someone figured out that they could make the seashell into a horn by blowing into it. So they blew as hard as they possibly could. <sighs> but no sound came out. Hmm, very perplexing, they thought. But after some experimentation, they realized that if they buzz their lips into the horn like this, <laughs> they might have a different result. Let's see if they were right. So these people that lived on tropical islands figured, this is awesome. Now we can blow loud seashell horns all day and we can actually communicate with our friends that live at nearby islands. But after just playing one note, things got a little bit boring. These folks asked themselves, how can we make more than one note? 
how can we make music out of this horn? So they started trying to make horns out of different materials. They tried leather. They tried making horns out of wood. And when both of the, these ideas failed, they figured that they could use metal to make horns. And that was, believe it or not, the start of the brass section of the orchestra. Now, all brass instruments have a mouthpiece that come apart from the instrument. And this is the place where you buzz your lips. Remember, you have to buzz your lips to make a sound. If you blow into it, no matter how hard you blow, you'll get nothing but air. Now the pitch of brass instruments, meaning the sound is either higher or lower, can be changed in a couple of ways. The first way is by changing the shape of your lips and breath on the mouthpiece, like this. So for a higher sound, you tighten your lips together really tight. And for a lower sound, you loosen your lips. Another way to change the pitch is by using valves on the specific brass instrument you are playing. And brass instruments also have slides, which you can also use to change the pitch as well. And each one is a little bit different. We will learn more about the specific instruments in the brass family later today in the program. Now in the orchestra, the musicians who play the brass instruments sit in the back. The main brass instruments in the orchestra are the trumpet, the horn, the trombone, and the tuba. These instruments are located in the back of the orchestra because they play really loud. You might not be able to hear the other instruments if the brass instruments were sitting up front. Now, to learn more about the instruments of the brass family, we have brought on a panel of experts. Today, we are joined by some very special guests who are members of the Vermont Symphony Orchestra. First up is Matt, who's here to tell us about his instrument, the trombone. Now tell me, Matt, where did the trombone come from? Where did the trombone come from? Excellent question. Uh, originally, the trombone was used in churches, and they would uh, hide behind the, the choirs and play along with, with them just to make sure that they stay on key. Especially at churches that couldn't afford an organ, uh, these were a lot cheaper to help make sure that your choir was staying on key when you're doing the hymns. I remember from our episode last week about the string family, that the violin also sounded very similar to the human voice. But the trombone doesn't have any strings to vibrate. It makes sound in a completely different way. So Matt, can you tell us a little more about how you make sound on a brass instrument? So I, what I want everyone to do to demonstrate, you can do this with me, put your hand in front of your face like this. Yep, make sure no one is around you. Yep, and then on the count of three, I want you to make this sound. <clears throat> okay, ready? Wait, wait for it. One, two, three. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. That's how we make our living. What I do, I take the <laughs> sound, I put into this. This is called a mouthpiece. Why do you think it's called a mouthpiece? Because it touches the mouth. Yeah, exactly. Then I put the, then I put the <laughs> sound that goes into the mouthpiece. It comes all the way down here. There, it takes a turn. It comes all the way up here, takes another turn, and then comes all the way out the bell. And the bell gets wider because it looks like a bell, right? And then it sounds a little something like this. <laughs> Wow, I could really imagine that spider just sliding right out of that spout. Now we have a question for you from a young student who lives in St. Albans, Vermont. Hi, I'm Molly. I'm eight years old and I live in St. Albans, Vermont. And my question is, why did you pick your instrument? It's the best instrument. I mean, look at this thing. It's gorgeous. Everybody who plays one is, is, a, is a good human being. Uh, plus, you can do it pretty much everywhere. I mean, I can play it in orchestras. I can play it in jazz bands. I can play it in 
ska bands. And you can pretty much fit it anywhere you want. Uh, and you find it everywhere. It's not always a good, it's not always a, a solo instrument for someone who is up front. Uh, but you do get to participate quite a bit in a lot of different kinds of music. And I love lots of different kinds of music. Well, thank you, Matt. And thank you, Molly, for that great question. The next instrument in the brass family, the orchestra, is the trumpet. Now this instrument is where the trombone came from, as Matt explained. We have our friend Mark here, who's a trumpet player in the Vermont Symphony Orchestra. And he's super excited to share his instrument with all of you. Hello, Mr. Toby. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today to talk a little bit about the trumpet. Now, way back when, before there were walkie-talkies or cell phones, people in the wilderness or across great distances needed to be able to send signals to one another. Well, look at the trumpet. Look at that long bell, zoom, just designed to send sound forth. A soldier in battle might be on horseback and need to know where to go in the dust and clamor. He or she might listen for a bracing fanfare. So I just used a word fanfare. That's kind of the name for these little compositions that signal certain things like, hey, if you can hear that song, you're going in the right direction. Let's say you're in a tower and your job is to watch for forest fires. And it's not enough to just yell, forest fire, forest fire. You need something louder than that. You get out your trumpet. People might hear that and spring into action to prevent that fire. So, do I have your attention? I bet I do, after all those fanfares. In the orchestra, the trumpet is the soprano voice, and it's used for many things other than just fanfares. It can play pretty lyrical melodies, too. Jazzy melodies. Okay, would you all like to know my favorite thing about trumpet? I'm going to get right to it. When you get it out of the case, you have the trumpet and you're going to have a mouthpiece. And I'm going to show you now how to put together the trumpet. Done. In case you missed it, I'll do that again. Trumpet, mouthpiece, done. So I like that about the trumpet. It's very simple. Um, it's easy to maintain, a little bit of oil, a little bit of grease. You'll notice I'm going to just hold the trumpet always with the left hand, and then I put my right hand over these valves right here to work the valves. Watch the fingers move. Okay, and you can learn that. It's just like learning anything. You learn it a little piece at a time. Well, how about playing a little bit of Itsy Bitsy Spider with me? Is everybody into that? Let's play it in the key of C, and I'll say, ready, set, go. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Was so fun. And next we have a question from a young musician who lives in South Hero, Vermont. Hi, my name is Alex. I am 11 years old. I live in South Hero, Vermont. And my question is how many brass instruments there are in the world and in the orchestra? Well, as we have talked about, and as you've learned in this program, we have four families of brass instruments in the orchestra. So picture the brass street of the neighborhood, four houses. You got the horn house, the trumpet house, the trombone house, and the tuba house. Now, what lives within each house? Many different types of the same things, like maybe you and your brothers and sisters. So look here, what do you see? <gasps> Brothers and sisters of the trumpet, okay? Many different types of trumpet, all, the, all used in the orchestra, okay? And I thought today that I would talk a little bit about the piccolo trumpet. And so to answer your question real quick, in an orchestra, there could be anywhere between zero trumpets all the way up to 14. It kind of depends on what the composer asks for. 
Sometimes they call on the piccolo trumpet, okay? I always tease with my students that I left this in the dryer one day and then here it is. Look at my hand and look at the piccolo trumpet. Let's hear how Itsy Bitsy Spider sounds on the tiny little piccolo trumpet. And the trumpet just, the piccolo trumpet loves to just zoom around like that. So I thought I'd share that with you a little bit today. That within the orchestra, there's up to seven or eight different kinds of trumpets. And there's actually several different kinds of horns and trombones and tubas as well. The nice thing is if you learn how to play one trumpet, you can pretty much play all of them. You learn a couple of the ways they're different. Any of you are capable of it. I hope that you'll enjoy some trumpet playing soon. Great question, Alex. We're actually going to explore one of these other brass instruments that are found around the world right now. A kudu horn is a musical instrument from Africa. It is made from the horn of the kudu, which is a type of antelope that lives there. The horn is long and twisted, and you play it by blowing into the thinner end. The kudu horn is used for music and as a signaling device. It has a loud, blaring sound. Listen to one now. Wow, those are really unique looking instruments with a very interesting sound. Don't you think so? Now we're gonna turn it back over to the Vermont Symphony musicians who can tell us a little bit about the last two instruments of the brass family. So the next instrument we're gonna learn about in the brass family is called the French horn. Our friend Sheila plays the French horn here in the Vermont Symphony Orchestra and she's gonna tell us all about her instrument. Hi, Mr. Toby. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here with you guys today to talk about the horn. So believe it or not, the horn in its very beginnings, a long, long time ago, was not at all considered a musical instrument. Instead, it was considered a really important tool for communication. And it was used in a really interesting way. If we close our eyes and we time travel back hundreds of years, we find ourselves in a time where large groups of people would travel in the fields of Europe and beyond on horseback hunting for food to bring home to their families to eat. Now, when this would happen, a group of hunters could be anywhere from five to 10 to 20 to 50 people, large groups of people. And if you imagine a bunch of people like that on horseback, traveling at great distances, spread out in all different directions, if they had to communicate with each other, the human voice isn't really gonna cut it. So, this is when they used the horn. Now, as you can imagine, in a big hunting expedition that might last all day long, you have a variety of things that you need to communicate to your hunting friends. So for example, at the end of the day, when it was time to go home, they might play something like this. So if we close our eyes and we time travel again, this time going ahead, hundreds of years from the hunting days to today, the horn looks a little different. You can see it's grown and developed. It's evolved. It's grown all this funky stuff right in the middle here. It's a little more complicated, but essentially it's the same. If you look at the hunting horn and you look at the modern horn, they're the same shape. You still have the bell, which is one of the most important parts of the horn. You still have the mouthpiece, which is the other most important part of the horn. And this stuff in the middle, well, it enables the horn to do some fancy tricks that it wasn't able to do back in the hunting days. With all this tricky fun stuff in the middle of the horn nowadays, we can do all kinds of beautiful things in music, no matter what we're playing, whether it's chamber music, if we're in an orchestral setting, if we're playing Broadway musicals, we can do all kinds of beautiful things. So I will play one of my favorite, favorite melodies from one of my favorite, favorite movies, and I bet you'll recognize it. I hope you like it. <laughs>
Hey Sheila, I've noticed something watching you play. Why do you play with your hand inside of the horn? I don't think I've seen any of the other musicians do that today. Mr. Toby, that's a great question. And so many people ask me that. We put the right hand in our bell when we play it for a few reasons. The first is very simply, it helps us hold it, it helps us keep it steady in our hands, but it really affects the sound. When the right hand is in the bell, it refines the sound, makes it a little more smooth, makes it a little bit better in tune and gives it that mellow creamy sound that makes the French horn so beautiful, as opposed to what it would sound like without our hand in the bell, it would be very similar to how the hunting horn sounds, very loud and strident and bright. Sometimes we want that in music, but we don't always want it. So when we have our right hand in the bell, it helps even things out a little bit. Well, that's very cool. Thanks for explaining that, Sheila. I never knew that the hand inside the horn has such an important job. Now we have a question from a young musician who lives in South Hero, Vermont. Hello, my name is Nathan. I am 11 years old. I live in South Hero, Vermont, and I would like to know how long you have been playing a brass instrument. Hi, Nathan. That's a great question, too. I have been playing the French horn since I was nine years old. And that for me was the fourth grade. So I'll tell you something crazy. I have been playing the French horn for 36 years. <laughs> That's a very long time. It sounds like a long time to me. And if you take all of the years of experience from the players that you're seeing on our video today from the Vermont Symphony, Matt, on the trombone, Mark on the trumpet, me on the horn, and then Taka on the tuba, who you haven't heard from yet. If you take all of the years of experience that we have combined, it's more than a hundred years, well over a hundred years of experience. So that <laughs> means a couple of things. It means we're old and it means we've all been playing for a long time, but it means you're gonna get good music from us. Wow, thank you so much for sharing the French horn with us, Sheila. Now onto the last major instrument in the brass family of the orchestra, the tuba. We have our friend Taka here with us, who is a tuba player in the BSO. He's very excited to share his instrument with all of you. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. This is the tuba. The tuba was invented because composers wanted to have more extremes like how low and how loud an orchestra could play. The tuba is the largest and heaviest member of the brass family. If you fully stretch out the tubing, the length of the tuba can be about 18 feet. That's like three of your teachers, one on top of the other, standing up on each other's shoulders. Because of its size, you can probably tell that tuba can play really low. Since it's so big, you play the tuba sitting down with the instrument in your lap with a bill facing up like this. Now let's try playing the tuba together. Everyone at home, sit down, put your left hand on the top bow of your imaginary tuba, and place your right hand up here where to press on the valves. It takes a lot of breath to make the tuba sound, so be sure you take a deep breath. Here we go. Well, that's great, Taka. That was a lot of fun. 
It's pretty funny hearing a huge instrument like the tuba play a song about an itsy bitsy teeny little spider. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about the role of the tuba in the symphony orchestra? Great question, Mr. Toby. There is usually only one tuba in an orchestra, and it has the very important job of grinding the whole ensemble. Just like the double bass of the string family, the tuba is responsible for playing the bass line and creating the foundation for the rest of the orchestra to play their notes. The tuba is also great at creating some special characters in music. For example, the tuba is the perfect for times when a composer wants something to sound big, loud, and scary. It's also great for when a composer wants to write something clumsy or silly sounding. Next up, we have a very special guest we'd like you all to meet. I'd like to introduce you to a brass student who's going to tell us a little bit what it's like to be a young musician. Thank you for joining us. Tell us your name and how old are you? Hi, my name is Lily and I'm 10 years old. Could you please show us your instrument and tell us how long you've been playing it? This is my trombone and I am going into my second year. I've heard you've been practicing a special piece that you'd like to share with us. Could you please tell us what it is and maybe play it for us? Okay, my piece is a Mozart melody. performance. Yay! We really appreciate your time and willingness to share your instrument and music with us. Now for those of you that don't have a brass instrument at home, but would like to try playing one today, pay special attention to this next segment, where I'm going to show you, and that's right, you, how to make your very own soda bottle trumpet at home. Once again, you're going to need a pair of scissors, masking tape, a cardboard tube, construction paper, and an empty soda bottle. First up, grab your empty soda bottle and pair of scissors. Now be sure to have adult supervision during this section. The first thing we'll need to do in making our soda bottle trumpet is build our mouthpiece. So how you're gonna do that is take your scissors and cut right at the top of your empty soda bottle, like this. And here we have our mouthpiece. Next, we're gonna grab our paper towel roll, which will be the body of our instrument. We're gonna take our mouthpiece that we cut out of the soda bottle and place it right at the top of the tube, like this. Then we're going to take some masking tape and tape the mouthpiece to the top of our instrument. Then our final step is we're going to take our piece of construction paper and roll it into a funnel, just like this. We're going to take that funnel and place it at the other end of the body of our instrument. And voila, everybody, we have our very own soda bottle trumpet. Well, that's about it for today's Musical Chairs, presented by Vermont Symphony Orchestra's Symphony Kids. 
I'd like to say a big thank you to all our special guest musicians from the Vermont Symphony Orchestra, our young guest musician, the Boys and Girls Club of Burlington, and to all of you for tuning in. Orchestral music can be so much fun, and we want you to know that you, yes you, can be a part of it. We say goodbye today with an arrangement for brass of Vermont's state song, These Green Mountains, performed by our guest musicians, Matt, Mark, Sheila, and Taka. We encourage you to sing along at home and to tune in next week for our segment on the Woodwind family. Bye everybody. Bye bye everyone.